Hi, I'm Gordon Wade. I'm about to start work on this 20.25 inch F3.5 quartz mirror. I uh, just received this from the mirror blank supplier. This mirror came from Superior Optical Supply and uh, it was pre-generated. It has a curve already cut into it, pre-generated by Mark Cohen. Now this mirror was generated with a diamond generator. So uh, the mirror spins around on the machine and a diamond wheel is applied to it uh, sitting at an angle to scoop out the glass uh, to get to the depth that I want. Uh, but the diamond generator does leave some artifacts. And if I zoom in on the surface here, you can see the damage on the surface that's caused by the grinding. I think there you can see uh, on the surface there are some little fine marks that you can see swirls that are left over from the grinding process, sort of little uh, uh, concentric grooves in the surface of the mirror. And as I do the fine grinding, the, the rough grinding and the fine grinding, uh, all of those will disappear and we'll have a very nicely ground surface. Uh, this is a, a nice generation job. Uh, this is a quartz mirror and quartz is a little harder than Pyrex, so uh, it does take slightly longer to grind than uh, uh, Pyrex or borosilicate glass. But uh, this is this is how you'd like to see a, a good generation job. There's no defects in it, uh, no places where any special work will be required. So uh, this thing is all ready to start working. So whenever I get a new blank in, the first thing I do is to take it into the spherometer work uh, area here and uh, do some measurements on it. Now the preliminary measurements are real simple. The first thing I did was to weigh this mirror blank, and uh, this mirror blank weighs 40 pounds. So we're starting out with 40 pounds of quartz, and uh, the next thing I do is to measure it, just to make sure uh, I got size mirror that I think. And indeed, this is 20 and a quarter inches. Uh, in the rest of these videos, when I'm talking about this mirror, I'll call it a 20 inch and not a 20 and a quarter inch. That's just uh, too hard to cope with. So 20 and a quarter inches, but from now on known as 20 inch mirror. Uh, the other thing I like to do is to measure the edge thickness of the mirror. To measure the thickness of the mirror, I just use a normal dial caliper. Uh, stretch it out a little bit. Put it on the edge of the mirror. And uh, do the measurement on the dial. And this one is 1.745 inches. And uh, that matches uh, the 1.75 spec on the mirror. So thickness of this mirror is just fine. Then the final thing that I measure on a new mirror is to measure the actual curvature that the mirror starts with. This was pre-generated uh, with diamond generator and already has a curve on it. So I'm going to use a computer controlled digital spherometer to measure this actual curve. Uh, this is the computer controller for this spherometer and it actually reads the uh, radius directly out here on the digital readout. This is the spherometer probe you can see the probe has uh, three ceramic feet and then a center probe. And if you watch on the meter, you can see that the uh, value that's on there moves as the uh, probe moves. And that's how you do the measurement. Now over here I have a granite surface plate. And a surface plate is nothing but a flat, a very flat reference. And uh, the way that the spherometer works is the three feet the three feet here on the bottom of the spherometer define a plane. So I put the spherometer probe on the surface plate and zero my machine. I'm telling it now it's on something flat. And then when I put this on the mirror, then at that point the uh, spherometer will measure the actual depth of the probe uh, below that flat reference. Uh, this particular spherometer plate is five inches in diameter and uh, that's put into the computer and then it can measure uh, through some inductive circuitry in here the actual depth of that probe knowing that it has a five inch radius there it can actually calculate the uh, radius and print it out here for me, display it for me. So the way I actually do it is I start by taking 
a measurement in the center of the mirror, or near the center of the mirror. So here at the center, it comes up measuring 122.629. Then I take the spirometer head and I move it about halfway out between the center and the edge and take another reading. So at that 50% zone, the spirometer reads 151.903 inches, or nearly nearly 152 inches. So that's at the 50% zone. And then I take a measurement way out at the edge of the mirror. I like to get out there pretty close, let it hang over a little bit if I can, and take a final measurement. So out there at the edge, it measures 136.753 inches. Now in any newly generated surface like this, you don't expect that it's a perfect figure of revolution. So what I actually do is I'll make a set of three or four measurements in each one of those three areas. So I'll make a measurement, move it over a little bit, make another measurement, move it to a slightly different spot, and so on. And then what I do is to take the average of those sets of measurements so that I can get a little better picture of the actual shape of the mirror. Now, again, during generation, uh, the reason that you have to look at this, I have a target that I'm shooting for. With this mirror, it's f3.5, which would be a radius of curvature of about 140 inches. Now, when uh, you have a mirror generated for you, uh, normally you're within uh, 6 to 10 inches of that range, but they might be off as much as 20 inches. And uh, it's important that we get close to our real target, which is 140 inches, and thus I want to know the radius in the center, the middle, and the edge, so that I can plan my grinding accordingly and know if I have to deepen this mirror or shallow it up. If I need to deepen it, I'm going to work the center. If I have to shallow the mirror, then I'm going to have to work the edge. So knowing these uh, three different measurements is real important. Now I took the measurements on this mirror earlier and took the averages and the average in the center is about 126 inches. At the 50% zone it's about 151 inches and out at the edge it's about 145 or 146 inches. And if you average, average all of those three it comes pretty close to our 140 average that we're looking for. The center is just slightly too deep plus there's a, a little uh, artifact left there from the generator itself which we'll clean up right away as soon as we, as we start grinding on this. But uh, those three measurements give me an idea of what the radius of this mirror is in reality and uh, knowing my target I can now plan my grinding. Now that I've got all the measurements on this mirror, the next step will be to actually start the grinding process. Uh, to do the grinding, I have a 16 inch ceramic tile and dental plaster tool that I'll use to uh, begin the grinding process. Now this particular tool is about an inch and a quarter thick and the ceramic tiles that are embedded in the surface are about 7 eighths of an inch square and uh, roughly a little over an eighth of an inch thick. Now this tool is left over from the last 20-inch uh, f3.5 that I uh, ground and, and polished and uh, won't last all the way through this mirror. And uh, I, ha I have several of these mirrors that I'm making in the near future. So uh, after I get a little bit of grinding done, we will make up a new tool. So there'll be a video on manufacturing a new tool a little later down the road. But right now I'll use this 16-inch tool on my uh, fixed post grinding machine and we'll start rough grinding on this in the next segment.